Did you know that we also have Western activities that you can try? And enjoy our local food. Enjoy a million dollar view. I can do this all day. Malo la mani ho eki mo le ai tonga ko tonga peta le tala le eki mo tolo ke tau polo kama tala noa ko yo e fia fini me homo le tio mo televisione pasifika. Welcome to Pacifica TV and Radio's Tala Noa program. Now, Norfolk Island remains an island not very far from Australia, located off Australia's eastern coast. The island was settled by Pitcairn Islanders, who, after their island became overcrowded, sent a petition to Queen Victoria, who suggested that the recently closed penal colony could be used by the Pitcairn Islanders and their descendants. After the original group of Pitcairn Islanders settled on Norfolk Island, there was a uh, group of them that returned back to the Pitcairn Islands, while the remainder of those people have form, formed the Norfolk Island people of today. They are the descendants of the original mutineers of the HMS Bounty, that of course, that famous mutiny that occurred near Tofua in Hapai in the Kingdom of Tonga. And not only that, but then they also uh, married with the native Tahitians uh, during a return trip to Tahiti. However, history hasn't been that kind. In 2016, the Australian government asserted full power over the island, including dissolving of the Norfolk Island Council, which was running the island. And the Norfolk Islanders feel like their identity, their culture, their traditions, their language and their future is being annihilated. We invite you to join us for a very special edition tonight of Talanoa as we look at the people of Norfolk Island and more particularly what's been going on on that island at the moment. And we do also note that some of our program tonight will be presented in the Norfolk Island language. So what away yoli and enjoy tonight's program a little bit different here on Talanoa. My lineage is that I'm a seventh generation descendant from Fletcher Christian and his Tahitian bride, Motua. My grandmother and grandfather were born on Norfolk Island. Uh, they come down the Nobs line and the Quintal line. These houses were built by the British for the officials of the second British settlement, penal settlement. Norfolk was then ceded to the Pitcairn Islanders and the Pitcairn Islanders drew lots for these houses as to which family would move into each house. And it's the first generation of Pitcairn Islanders and subsequent ones that have turned these buildings into our homes. 
We decided to reclaim number eight because we can see the complete disregard. We've had our voice removed. We have no elected body to talk on behalf of the Norfolk Island people. That's been removed. There's an injustice there. We have never had input into the last six years of what would happen down in Kingston. Management plans have been drawn up without community consultations. So it, it, was, it was time for us to start saying, no, enough is enough. These were gifted to the Pitcairn people and the Norfolk descendants. And it's time that we, we reminded them First and most importantly, uh, Norfolk Island people um, have a connection with all these houses. Every Norfolk Islander that comes down here, they've all got a story in all these houses from their forefathers. Uh, we haven't lost that connection uh, to each other or to uh, our homes. This was a house where third generation grandparents lived, Nathaniel and Abby Quintle. It's just an amazing feeling to be connected back to my forefathers. And you walk through the hallways and the rooms and you just feel the moments where you just want to cry sometimes. It's an overwhelming feeling. It's like they're looking over me, uh, looking over all of us down here. And it's just like uh, they've welcomed me into their house. As an Norfolk Islander, I'm descended from quite a few different lines, but this was the home of Arthur Quintle, who was the son of Matthew Quintle off the Bounty. So I'm actually descended through through Arthur Quintle through three different lines. So this is the home where my Tapuna, my ancestors, where they where they lived, and this area is known as Town to us. It's it's Kingston or Dana Town. I would like to see the whole town reclaimed by Islanders. And at the moment, it's basically the playpen of, of all the Australian government and their seconded officers. It's not their place, it's our place, and I'd like to see that rectified. This whole area is where our forefathers lived, where they worked, where they played, where they draw their last breath. And I think after 165 years of power and subjugation over us, it's about time that the islanders here start taking a stand and asserting what is their birthright, asserting their general rights and all. Unfortunately, Norfolk Islanders in, the, in more recent years, in the last five or six years, have had to endure excessive um, acts of colonialism where we have every single vestige of democracy has been removed, where land has been taken away from us, where we have been inundated with immigration, which has attempted to dilute our population, we have basically been treated not only as second-class citizens, but as no citizens. And that the Australian government refused to acknowledge that we even exist. And I think this is the first step in forcing them to acknowledge that we exist as a people and that we definitely have rights here. I'm Mary Christian Bailey, and I'm here for Peter and for my four other children because they are the heirs of the heritage of this island. And I'm also here for my late husband who died 18 months ago without seeing justice return to the island. And I'm here for his mother and father too, who were also both descended from the original occupant of this house after the Pitcairners arrived. His mother in particular was present at the evictions that took place in 1908. When the evictions happened, the people were required to sign a piece of paper to say that the houses didn't belong to them and she refused to sign it because she believed and her parents had believed that the houses were theirs if a, in perpetuity. And she was there present that morning and she often in her old age used to talk about that day and she spoke how the administrator's wife came around with a tray of tea and offered her a cup of tea and she said no I could not possibly drink it because she really believed that that house was hers. They say that the proper document was stolen but they were led to believe it was theirs to occupy in the same way as they had Pitcairn Island where they 
they were their own community in charge of their own community and they weren't just a simple backward community they were the first community in the world to have compulsory and free education they were the first community in the world to have a vote for women since 1838 when Australia was just a collection of penal colonies um, they were they were civilized in the best sense of the word but they didn't have good legal advice they didn't really know their rights they were not simple people but they were humble people and had lived simple lives but they didn't really know their rights so they would sooner leave and some of them left and, and burnt the places down because they didn't believe that anyone else had a right to them but the Norfolk Islanders believed deep down their hearts and they've been believing it since 1908 when so many of them were evicted that an injustice was done, the wrong thing was done and that these are really theirs. I'm not a Norfolk Islander, I've lived here for 55 years but my, my in-laws and my husband and my sons and daughter too have taught me that they're a proud people not in a vain sense but they're proud because they're a distinct race of people with distinct values a distinct her heritage distinct identity which they are in danger of losing as they are forced to become Australians first and Norfolk Islanders second and that's why I'm here and I will I will do whatever it takes to stand up for these my family and for these other Norfolk Islanders who just I'm so rejoicing that they are finally making a stand and making sure their voice is heard. As far as I'm concerned the land belongs to the people that walk on it not to some foreign entity 1600 kilometres away and it's about time they start recognising that the whole occupation of number eight is basically to send a clear message that the time has come that we aren't going to put up with your colonial tactics anymore. It's important for me personally to protect the heritage for my children, Mahana and Nalani. If we don't do something now, it'll never happen and it'll be too late. At the moment we have quite brutal policies in place to basically to get rid of the Norfolk Islanders. I know it sounds far-fetched, I know it sounds brutal, but that's actually the, the policy in place at the moment. And, and I'm here to protect their heritage, protect their island and protect their future. This is not about two people taking possession of a house. This is about reminding people that these are Norfolk Island assets, not Commonwealth of Australia assets. These were gifted to the Norfolk Island descendants. Prior to that, the Pitcairn Islanders had arrived in 1856. Some may see this as a very radical step to take, but unfortunately for a long time we have tried to be diplomatic, we have tried to be inclusive, and nothing has happened. In fact, it's gotten worse. We now don't have an elected body to talk for the Norfolk Island people. This was an opportunity to remind people that this is our land. It upsets me that the Norfolk Island people no longer have a voice in our own land. And it has to stop. It has to stop. The colonialization has to stop. We're tired. We're hurt, deeply hurt, that we will be considered as nothing but a footnote going forward for future generations. We can see massive erosion of our culture and heritage. You only have to read the journals from 1856 as to how much blood, sweat and tears was put into these soils to make a brand new home for these people that they were proud of. And it's up to us to keep that going.
be if I ain't Eustace Adams. You so back, my mate. What the way I draw for you? Look good from ya. Oh, Fred Snell. I learn you, you car killer cascade onion. <laughs> what a way, my mate. Yet our bullet goes straight through my upper jaw. And the best thing about it is them send me straight back to England. What's this, dear? 20th September? The been us 11 months I've been up ya. Long time in here. I tell you why. You look good, my mate. Well, thank you. Yeah, Eustace, I had air with you when you hut on the way, 2nd of August last year. Actually, I get one gunshot wound on my laugh leg in November last year. But I know lucky sim as you. Them send me in one hospital down Glen Ruin back in France. I only wear from our 19th Battalion for six weeks. That's all. You been here from home? You bet. You know my mum rose clear near. Them call her big mum. Yeah, you bet. Well, she been sent a couple of letter and a tin wettles. But you just kawa. You find them damn Germans been take it for them. And you been ya from her? You bet. When I in England, my darling mum Amy, 
she must be sent a letter and a parcel on every Macambo voyage. You ought to see them in our hospital. Them's a nano, and them's always the biggest a mullah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, been as a long time since him he leave Norfolk on our Macambo in there. I said, ah, I'm sick for Norfolk Island, and do mine what? No bad to sight on earth for what thing I've been see you, yeah, and here. And why? I can't wait for getting home. Hey, Fred, look who there. That there was little scrapper Scotchy Quintal. He knows the change. What there, Fred? What there, Fred? He looking back, but he cast a yuck lung. Here, Ted, you can't wear you. You know no we in Glencross Wood in Belgium. I tell you too. Same as the thing you all live in Pilly. Same as them cattle down in a drain back home. What are we you two? Oh, we're, we're good, good. Matty. And you? I joined our fifth machine gun company back in March this year. And het hey, me. I lie. I've been here most time in a hospital in February when I in our 20th battalion in Fleurs, France. I had a gunshot wounds on my leg and tons septic. So I had one month of barely up in one Canadian hospital. And what side you just come from now? I had a lot of you. You look kind of similar as one hour sullen. Just been down on a stern for rama. Well, if you only know why, uh, I just been on leave back up in England. And you know my mum lives in here. Well, she sent me some hee shall. And I'm also Lucy Willow. I did, but don't mind. We're going to get home soon, surely, no? Oh, prayers be. Well, you two, heard a good for see Orly, and how good for talk our Norfolk language way up ya in here. Hey, them telling me for assemble back up camp for dinner. We chef and ate this night. We're going to try for tech e press for the third time. But do we worry about dying here, you two. See Orly back in England, and hopefully back home on Norfolk. Greasy luck, brother. Yeah, hey, Eustace. See you back home on Norfolk, my mate. Look out for you, brother. Hey, Dad. What are Lana? Can we talk about how my great-grandfather go away in World War I, please? You don't mind. And why? Now, where side him is stuck? Well, we never been talked about it that much. And I do that year 10 RSL history, and I learned plenty. But I just want for no side he go, and if he had for kill us all on that's all. Well, his great-grandfather was Alfred Rockwell Snell. And he born ya on the 18th of January, 1891. Did you tell 1891? How long ago a star, Dad? I tell you, let me work it out. It was 132 years ago. Long time in here. He joined the Australian Imperial Forces in Sydney on the 8th of July, 1915. And as a matter of fact, he joined same time as Eustace Adams. Hard on for believe it, ain't he? Them two leave Norfolk on that SS Macambo and then both go out there to England, then both go into battle on the Western Front in France and Belgium. Hey Dad, who over there with him? Well, had about 23 Auckland Norfolk Islanders there at different time, but Grandad had two good mates over there with him. He always used to talk about Eustace and now the one is Evil Lawrence Quintal, and them used to call him Scotchy. Scotchy? I tell you, that is funny name on air, Dad. <laughs> yeah, darling. Norfolk is tarder for name of Did Great Grandad's mates come home too? Eustace now come home, sweetheart. He was killed in action in one side them called Zonakeki, not our far from your priest up in Belgium. Grandad Fred Lana Mai's dad. He there when Eustace was killed. The 19th Battalion and our 5th Machine Gun Company was part of the 2nd Division and Grandad Fred Tull Eustace was blown to pieces and them only identify him by his dog tag. Sorry darling, I know it's terrible, but I was Norfolk Sullen go through plenty of Yana. That is terrible on here, Dad. Thanks for lining me about it. Oh sweetheart, 
to climb, we just had to thank all them for them sacrifice. What happened to Scotchy, Dad? He come back from the war and Leo ya, then he Lee ya and Leo in New Zealand. His mum was from Otahu in New Zealand and Dar's side he did, I believe. I da glad he get back and I feel da sorry for Eustace, Dad. Well, let me learn you some good news about Grandad Fred. Eustace was one of his best mates, and when he and Evelyn Polly Christian had a little salon, he sent him one of his sons, Eustace. Did you know that? And you know which son, sweetheart? <laughs> his dad and my pa. You bet, and eh, we how lucky we got that connection. His Norfolk name was Plute, and how much we miss him. And guess why, Daddy's darling girl? What are, Dad? Scotchy used to earn him land right across from Pa and Nan's. Side Honey McCoy, give Gwen Rabby. Hey, Dad, thanks for me. I love Aklan talking about I was Norfolk son. You know how I line you? I do the history thing up da RSL. Well, when them line me about great granddad Fred, I've been write one poem about I was family. And I now have been read it out loud. You want for Yarrit, Dad? And why, sweetheart, if you do mind. I now have been name it. And when I said done, you might help me for one title, wa? I said write in English with some Tahiti words I learned doing our Tahitian dancing. Hate, Dad. There is no doubt that we all have a vahi. You see, that is where I'd like to be. It is right in front of us and easy to see. A Tahiti word for place. It's always there for me. When I was born, I became part of my whenua. You see, that is where I'd like to be. It is right in front of us and easy to see. A Tahiti word for land. It's always there for me. I came into this earth and I found my tefare. You see, that is where I'd like to be. It is right in front of us and easy to see. A Tahiti word for home, it's always there for me. I am so lucky I have my matua. You see, that is where I'd like to be. It is right in front of us and easy to see. A Tahiti word for parent, it's always there for me. I grow older and I am so lucky to have my utufare. You see, that is where I'd like to be. It is right in front of us and easy to see. A Tahiti word for family, it's always there for me. I didn't meet my great-grandpa Fred, it wasn't meant to be. Fred made my pa Eustace, who I was so blessed to see. My nan, my mum, my dad, my brother, thanks for me. You gave me my vahi, whenua, te whare, and utu whare. I love it, my slow. I love you, dad and mum and Kaya da much. We also name my poem. How about we call it The Bass Side on Earth? <laughs> I think we already got our poem, so write it. This next poem is one that I've written in our Norfolk Island language. It's called The Bass Side on Earth, or The Best Place on Earth. It's just some of the things I like about Norfolk Island as my home. Come along for me and for all what and worth. I'll show you the bass little island on earth. Norfolk we call it. So come hear me start. Come see for the was island kind of close in our heart. We start from town pier, say them south use a churn. Say that was sullen, fast land when them come from Pitcairn. Walk up on our hill and look out cross town in our late afternoon, when our sun sinking down, when our sky must as red on and them pine must as black. Hey, must be so September, as them whale birds are back. And down on our common, at our lonely cow calling, her calf back and her cause our knife at night falling. First thing, all our morning, I'll show you one side, down one cliff, on one ledge, side one tropic bird hide. I'll take you go walk, side them poor bear so grow, side one wild hen so lair, and them cock you so crow. 
true uh, king we how lucky let thy place lie near you. When God make an offer, he know nothing for do. Come here, me go look, say them neo palm grow. Right down in them valley, side Sala Norgo. And see if you'll catch sight of one red robin's breast. All of one grin on, they're darting about gain the nest. Side them farn and a white wood and a oak and a vine, all growing together, they're long for them pine. Hey, I've been plenty siding for all what and worth. I reckon Norfolk is the best side on earth. We walk out our edge, side them ghost buds a burrow, pass them corn for Thanksgiving, growing tall in them furrow, and look down our cabbage on them stuff, rolling in. When I tell there's one good side, that's what then I mean. Come picnic for bounty, make sure you come too, and share our wettles, got one welcome for you. Sit our chimney where smoking, smell our wood fire burning, and watch our young Sala laughing and running. Let I learn one more time, and for all what and worth, no two ways about it, there's the best side on earth. To the people of Norfolk Island, we send a big thank you, Watawai Yoli, and thank you so much for joining us. To all our viewers tonight, we trust that you have enjoyed a little bit of history of this unique race of people, the people of Norfolk Island, the descendants of the Pitcairn Islanders. And we also dedicate tonight's program to, of Talanoa to both the people of Norfolk Island and of course their brethren on the Pitcairn Islands over there in Eastern Polynesia. For the rest of us, we hope that you enjoyed the program. It was very insightful to see what has been going on on Norfolk, as well as their beautiful sing-song language of the mixture of the British language of English, Gaelic, as well as Tahitian that forms the unique Norfolk language of today. From Talanoa tonight, thank you so much for joining us. We've got more coming up on Talanoa over the next few weeks, so stay tuned here on Pacifica TV and Radio. From myself, Suliani, good evening and have a great night. God bless. Ko Hoko hau sivi ko vita hiva mo ma o mai hango fua folau kapau o huke kau ihe polokalama tori fu e akau te ma o malava foki ke toko ni iko e mo ho ngahi fia ma o ke ke lava o faka hoko ha sivi ko vita hiva kapau o huke lolo tonga no fu faka mava he i pe kolontini te ma o malava ke toko ni iko e mo ngahi faka matala fi kau aki e no fu mo ma o me toko ni pe he ki ha fi ka fitu taki ma ngahi o fisi faka tala fi kau lahi ho fonua ko fi ke telefoni ke ke ta mai ki ai ko taha valongi au ni matahaua tolu ni maono taha valongi au ni matahaua tolu ni maono pe ke kole ke lea ke to taha ngaue o kole e fakatonga o ka pao o ke fi ma o tokoni i he fitu taki i le fakapitania to e famana to ato e fika ko taha valongi au ni matahaua tolu ni maono
Thank you.